Do you know what I could use right about now? Bloody scarf. And you know where I'm gonna get one? I'm gonna make one. I'm gonna learn to knit. So the last time I filmed in a shop, I got kicked out and told off. Excuse me, can yep. I help you at all? We're uh, just buying some art supplies. With cameras? Yeah. No, you can take the cameras out, thank you. Okay. So I think we need a strategy. I think if we tell them it's for a school project, we might not get kicked out. They might be more lenient. And it's technically true because I'm going to school you all on how to learn how to knit. That makes sense. It's just good. How are you going? Do you mind if I film? I'm just going to buy some wool and it's for a school project. So is that all right? Thank you. I want, some, I want something to suit me color wise. Suits my eyes? What do you reckon? <laughs> it's multi -cut. This is awesome, look at that. Oh, what knitting needles would you recommend for an absolute beginner? I've got eight ply and whatever this is. Here, so a seven millimeter. Oh wow, okay. Oh, there you ah, go. Brilliant, forgive my enthusiasm. I'm just getting over excited. Should I work with shorter ones? Uh, or? What are you making? I don't know yet. Maybe I should get some, some fancy wool too. What's your fanciest eight ply? I, f I feel like I'm already getting too much. <laughs> Maybe I'll just get one like super thick ply to show off my finger knitting skills. All done, yeah, I'm ready. Yep, yep I'll get okay. these please. It's gonna get crazy. This is gonna be wild. We're gonna learn fast, we're gonna have fun, and we're gonna make knitting the most exciting you never thought it could be, unless you're really into knitting, in which case it's already exciting. I got it! I got my wool for my wool day. Needles, my lovely red, blue, white, eight ply. This is a thicker one, I think. And then we've got this big boy, which I'm gonna use to show you my finger knitting skills to get started, because that's the only experience I have with knitting, which is why today, to learn knitting, I'm gonna be following some classes on Skillshare that have sponsored this video. Skillshare are an amazing learning resource with more than 29,000 classes in illustration, drawing, design, business, technology, and even knitting, which we're gonna be diving into to today. Now you can get two months of free premium Skillshare membership by clicking the link in the card in the description and if you're looking for a place to start I recommend my courses one on how to be a youtuber and the other on how to present to camera. So while you're there explore the many thousands of classes that they have and today we're going to be diving into some knitting. For those of you who have been around the channel for a while you know that this is something I like to do. I like to play with new art and creative mediums that I have no personal experience or familiarity with. Now I am familiar with knitting of course in that my mother-in-law is a very talented knitter. Let me show you my mother-in-law's beautiful work. Look at this. She made these lovely dresses and cardigans. Oh my god. I don't I don't know how she does these patterns and like the delicate making of this stuff. She doesn't know I'm like bragging about her knitting in this video. She probably never saw this coming. There are some really cool things I've seen online of like people making pop culture figures and really cool characters and chibi form or just really interesting ways that people have used knitting as their art form to express their creativity. And I want to look into it today and see what it takes to just learn the baby steps. I should probably expect that I won't be able to get very much done, but I would like to see how much I can learn in one day and I'd like to take you along with me. So I've got my needles. Yeah. I'm quite the adept uh, chopsticker, so I'm, I'm feeling like that'll serve me well. But I'm not working off of zero experience here because, and, and let me tell you, I've alluded to in this video so far, my experience with finger knitting. Well, when I first went to high school and I had no friends or many things to look forward to when I got home after school, I used to do this. I used to get a ball, of, I, I got a bowl of, bowl, 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 bowl. I got a whole bowl of wool or yarn or whatever, people call it and I did this this is this is my experience with finger knitting do your loop on your finger you do another loop you pull the loop over you yank it down you pull it up and you repeat that look at that now this isn't proper knitting obviously I mean I could I, I don't know if you can actually use finger knitting to make like things probably not all I knew how to do was make this, which sort of looks like a braid. It's sort of cool, I guess. Um, I did set myself projects of like, seeing if I could finger knit a whole bowl of wool. And <laughs> I did that one or two times in my time. I didn't have any friends when I was a teenager. I don't have many friends now. There you go. I got a friendship bracelet. I used to make a lot of these. An odd activity. 
for someone without any friends. I just wore them myself. Didn't give any to a friend. If I did that, I probably wouldn't wear it. It's probably. High school was a dark time for me. <laughs> but we're gonna make it bright today with a bit of knitting and I'm gonna see if I can at least learn how to make the beginnings of a scarf. And I'm gonna start off by following these Skillshare courses for the very basics. In fact, I'm gonna see how many beginning knitting classes I can find and follow those. And then when I start to, you know, find my confidence, then we'll see where we end up. Probably still on the beginning classes. I began with a course called Intro to Beginning Knitting by Genevieve, who was really great at getting into the basics. She had a really friendly presentation and talked about the benefits of knitting on the go and as a stress relief or a social exercise. But also she pointed out that there's a resurgence in knitting lately as people realize that you can do a lot more than just knit clothes. Here are a bunch of really awesome knitting projects that I've just found looking around the internet. And it gives you an idea as to when people are obviously familiar with the medium, that you can do some really cool stuff with this from making characters to all sorts of different interesting sculptures and designs. But anyway, all that stuff is very fancy and I'm just a noob, so I won't be attempting anything of that magnitude today. But I did find Genevieve's class really useful in learning the basics, beginning with my first cast on, which is apparently what the first row on the knitting needle thing is called. And boy, oh boy, does knitting look simpler than it feels to actually try for the first time. I am not a very patient person. I'm the first one to admit that about myself and I did get quite frustrated at the early stages, I have to admit. But she did mention in the lessons that she prefers to not use metal needles and recommends using thicker wool for beginners. And I was stupidly starting off on thin wool with long metal needles, which is the opposite of what I probably should have. So rather than saving my thick colorful fan wool for the end. I switched to it to start off with because it was my thicker wool and I also switched to my thicker bamboo needles which were short and simple to learn on. Now even with that change while it was easier the first row was excruciatingly awkward but the big plus here is I was actually making a row. The thick wool was much easier to work with and as you can see already I've gotten a lot further than I did in my first attempt with slightly improper supplies for a beginner. Though moving to a new row was way more intimidating than it should have been. After three or four stitches in the next row, I was like, ah, there we go. I sort of understand this now. So by the time I reached row three, I actually started to feel a spark of confidence and the process from here was just really simply a process of repetition. I had a feeling I'd be a lot more comfortable after smashing out a few dozen rows of stitches. And so I just got stuck into it. Now there are also some really high quality Skillshare original classes on knitting that you should check out too. The first one is called Knitting One, Learn the Basics with a Simple Scarf, which goes over the same thing in the lesson I mentioned before, but with the addition of some extra techniques, which I'm not quite up to yet, at least in the period of time I have to work on my project today, but is still really approachable for beginners, including things like adding the cool optional fringe, the, the dangly bits at the end of the scarf that proper scarves have. Another Skillshare original producer class is called What's New in Knitting? Make Your Own Clutch. Learn with Wool and the Gang. And this is one of those classes where you can learn from the basics to produce something that you can actually use, such as a clutch. Again, not something I would personally actually use or even be able to make yet, but worth mentioning because as you can see, there are these really awesome channels to go through from the beginning stages of learning how to knit to creating actually usable things and then moving on to the more advanced classes on Skillshare, of which there are quite a few. Yeah. Guess who got the hang of it? <laughs> I feel like I felt when I discovered finger knitting. The thing is, now that I, I have the swing of it, I'm really quite feeling that uh, that mood kick in where I want to essentially do the whole thing and see how far I get. Oh my god! Look at that! Look at that! Now, just for context, let's let's just flash back to the first row. I actually had the front camera rolling and I just want to show you my expression and the pain on my face and the difficulty I had just dealing with the, the first row. Now flash forward to just in the last 10 minutes, you'll see the expression on my face was totally different.
So I was gonna try and learn the basics and then try and learn a few more tricks and then come back and finish this thing off, but I'm on a, I'm on a bloody roll. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna go as far as I can and I'm gonna leave uh, maybe two hours at the end of the day to see after I've really gotten the hang of this and got, got the basics down to muscle memory and see how big I can make my scarf to see how that applies to other techniques, see if I can learn a few little stitches and see if I can even handle those metal needles with the thinner string. I have to admit, the more I got absorbed into this, the more I lost track of time and just enjoyed my peripheral entertainment. Listening to audiobooks while I built and relaxed into the muscle memory of knitting row after row, it became really easy to just enjoy zoning out. And in fact, I even found myself feeling quite gleeful every time I was surprised by a bright color in my pattern coming along. It was just like a really fun, strangely relaxing process. I loved it. Okay, so it's been about five hours. God, that time, flies. Honestly, you actually really zone out. I was just listening to audiobooks and getting sort of taken away to other places. I can totally see how people would just do this in the background while watching a show or hanging out with friends. So yeah, I dig it, I gotta say. So much so that I, I was tempted to just keep going until I have a scarf to show you guys. I'm pretty proud of myself. This is more than I thought I'd be able to learn in one day. I do have a couple of hours left in the day and I need to see what else I can learn in that period of time and also put my skills to the test and see if I can tackle the finer thread and the trickier needles. So let's give that a go. I'm going to put my uh, beginner needles aside. How do you stash this away for later? Do you just like s stab that? In? No, you probably don't do that. Maybe you just like, oh, look at that. Yeah, you just roll it up neatly. Just pocket it for when you're on the bus. And then in public and when people least suspect it, just whip it out. But now it's time to see how far my skills have progressed. I'm going to come back to the tricky wool and the tricky sticks a little more advanced than I was ready to begin with, but hopefully my skill levels have got me to a point where I can dabble with these. And so I graduated to my metal needles and my thinner wool. But before I could actually learn new stitches, I had to learn a new, slightly trickier cast on pattern. The next class I followed was called Knit and Pearl learn the foundations of making a ribbed scarf. And this was by Beth Thoroughgood. She started off by showing a slightly more complicated cast on pattern, which took me about 10 minutes of really slow watching and re-watching of the slightly more complicated cast on process to even figure out how to do it. Eventually, after I'd done two successful loops, it finally clicked and I could complete the full row. It's funny how quickly things make sense when you understand how the, the actual stitch pattern works or whatever. And then from there, I just completed three rows of the knit stitch I'd become familiar with, and then I was instructed to try a new stitch called the pearl stitch, which as you can see, ended in me missing a loop and losing my place and screwing the whole thing up and starting again. But in starting again, I had a fresh start. And as you can see, I jumped into it with a lot more confidence because I knew how to do the cast on much more comfortably. And by the time I got to learning the pearl stitch again, I was way more relaxed and confident and finally figured it out. And as instructed for my mini project, I alternated the rows between the two kinds of stitches that I'd learned to make a nice little pattern. I did find myself forgetting the last kind of stitch I did by the time I moved to the next row. So to help me remember, I stuck some tape on one of the needles and mentally assigned that to one of the stitch types. So every time that needle came along, I just switched over to that stitch type. Sometimes it's uh, good to give you Yourself. little tricks and clues to help your slow newbie brain latch onto a process a little better. So after my second round, this is what I've ended up with and it is a much more refined pattern than I had previously, alternating rib stitches and pearl stitches, I believe is what they're called. Knit. Knit stitch and pearl stitch, not ribbed. The ribbed thing is the alternating of the knit stitch and the pearl stitch. I learned that today. I haven't done it yet because I I'm still figuring out the basics, but hey, you know what? Like, that's pretty cool. That's that's better than I expected I would be able to do by the end of today, which I think is really cool. But I do not like ending these videos without some sort of creative payoff. So I'm gonna take my little project here, my little scarf work in progress, and uh, I'm gonna spend the next while working on it in the evenings while I watch some shows with my wife and hang out with my kids. My goal is by tomorrow morning or the next morning after that at the latest to have a lovely warm scarf. Enjoy the payoff. I'm just gonna go enjoy some knitting so you can enjoy the payoff. I'll be back soon.
<sighs> well, I finished my scarf. To be honest, it's not as long as I would have hoped. <laughs> This is, as far as it, this is as far as it went. I didn't have any more wool to work with and I didn't know how to extend it. Anyway, point is, I successfully finished using up a whole ball of wool and I have a scar. But remember how I said I used to uh, finger knit a whole ball of wool as well when I was in high school? Well, I took the liberty <laughs> to do that. I made this all one giant friendship bracelet. And back in the day, if I was feeling particularly crazy when I had this, I used to do a double whammy. That's right, a finger knitted finger knit brain. Look at it, it's, oh, I've gone mad with power. Well, I think it's clear to say that my knitting skills have come far in the last few days. I've actually had a bit of fun learning. Uh, I have a lot more respect for people who can actually make impressive stuff. So if that's you, well done, because it's not me yet. It was a lot of fun learning something new and if you guys are looking to learn something new make sure to check out the sponsor of this video Skillshare. They have so many courses it's insane with over 29,000 classes in illustration, drawing, design, animation and loads more even things like cross stitching and knitting, stock market trading or 3D printing. Check out Skillshare you can get two months of free premium membership with the link in the card and in the description. Well that does it for this video everyone thank you so much for watching make sure to subscribe to Draw with Jazza for more fun with art and creativity and trying new things from time to time as well hit like if you enjoyed it and check out the other videos over there in the meantime i'm gonna just go warm up and maybe make a bigger scarf 